Hi everyone, this is Dr. Orkin Bajek and today we are going to talk about the theory of constraints. So let's get started. So typically in businesses or manufacturing companies or any other organizations, a service or a production process may require completion of multiple different processes or steps. So this could be that customers go through one type of service and then once they are done, there they go to another service and then one when they are done there they go to another one and so on and from a manufacturing perspective it could be that raw material goes through certain types of uh, production processes at certain machines and then when they are done they are sent to the next step and so on so theory of constraints focus on situations like this and consider that there is at least one process or one step that impacts the throughput. And what this means is there's, there's one, at least one process that reduces our potential throughput. And that is called the bottleneck. Okay, so that we can view it as a step in which we are spending the most amount of time, for example. So let's look at a numerical example and see how we can analyze a system that involves multiple processes and how the bottleneck process impacts the revenue uh, and maybe profit levels. So assume that customers go through three steps before their service is complete at a car wash. And these steps are washing, drying, and payment. So you drive to the car wash, your car is washed and then dried, and then you make the payment and leave the system. So at each step, there's currently one employee. So for washing services, there's one employee responsible and drying another employee. And then payments, there's also one employee that collects the money. Once the process is complete, the customers pay $20. So for, for this entire process, the customers are paying $20. And the following table that we are seeing on the screen is showing us how much time each car spends in each step and the salary of the, uh, the employees per hour. So for example, for the washing step, each car spends about 12 minutes, drying takes about five minutes and payment takes about two minutes. And the, the labor cost per employee per hour is $15 for the, the employees working for the washing step, $13 for the drying, and $11 for the payment step. So what we are going to do first is to calculate the profit per hour at a system like this. So first of all, what is my revenue per car, right? So that amount is given to be $20. So again, each time a customer is served, they are going to pay $20. So the revenue is $20 per car. Okay, now we can go ahead and calculate our effective capacity per employee per hour. So the reason why we are going to need to do this is we know the time it takes for each step of the process, but we need to know what our capacity is per hour in terms of how many cars we can wash, dry, and receive payment for per hour. So here is what I am going to do. I'm going to copy and paste these, and then I am going to add a new line, and I'm going to say that that will be the effective capacity per employee. That will be in terms of cars per hour. And then the number of employees. And that will basically store how many employees we have. So currently we have one. So my effective capacity per employee, so in terms of number of cars per hour, we can calculate it by dividing 60 minutes per hour by how much time it takes per car times the number of employees, right? So we have one, one employee and then we have 60 minutes. And then if we divide 60 by 12 per employee that we have, we have 
the capacity, effective capacity is five cars per hour. And if I drag this all the way to the right, I can calculate the effective capacities for each uh, process in my system. So this means that we can now identify the current bottleneck in my system. And the way to do it is to take the minimum of the effective capacities for each step. And that will be equal to five because five is the smallest. And that is coming from the step that we call washing. Therefore, the bottleneck is the washing step of our process. Okay, so that is going to be the key driver of our profit. So let's let's try to calculate the profit. So we are going to do revenue minus cost. And at this point, I would like to mention that we can either assume that all the other costs are aggregated, aggregated into the labor cost, or we can ignore the other types of costs, such as material costs, rent, uh, taxes, and so on, uh, just for simplicity purposes. So we are going to assume that only cost we are taking into account is the labor cost. So revenue is going to be revenue co per car times how many cars we can process per hour, right? So since we are earning $20 per car and we can process, we can complete five cars per hour, our revenue is $100 per hour. And the cost is again, coming from the employees. So we can do 15 times one, plus 13 times one, plus 11 times one. And that will be the total cost, which just includes the labor cost. And then if we do 100 minus 16, 39, that will be our profit per hour, which is $61. So it, with, the, with the current setting of our system, we can say that our profit level is about $61. Now, part B is asking us to analyze the case when we have two more employees for washing, okay? And is this a good idea from a business perspective? So let's, let's take a look. So I'm going to do that, work on that here. Revenue per car is still the same. So I am going to copy and paste my table here, and we are going to work on the effective capacity. And instead of per employee, I'm going to look at the entire system because now instead of one, I have three employees working for the washing step. So that means we have three employees for washing, okay? So how is that going to impact my effective capacity? So. I can look at my effective capacity per employee table, and I can multiply those values by what I have in the current setting, right? So for example, my effective capacity per employee is five cars per hour when I have one employee working for washing. But if I have three, now it will be five times three equals 15, okay? And it is not going to change for the drying and payment steps because we still have one employee for them. Therefore, the effective capacities are 12 and 30 for drying and payment. So the washing capacity increased to, to 15 from, from five. Now let's look at the new, the new bottleneck. Okay, so I'm going to change it and say new bottleneck. And that is... 12, as you see, so that is the drying step. So this means that the, the bottleneck now changed. It's not the washing step anymore, it's the drying step, okay? And this is happening because we increased our capacity at the washing step, and then the drying step became the bottleneck. And just to, just to note here that this doesn't have to happen at all cases, for example, we could have increased the number of employees and washing could have still been the bottleneck. So we have to analyze it. Just by increasing the number of employees, 
we don't guarantee that it will not be a bottleneck anymore, okay? But in this case, the bottleneck changed. Now let's look at the revenue, cost, and profit. So we are still making $20 per car, but instead of five cars, we are able to serve 12 cars per hour. So that increases our revenue up to $240. The cost is changing. So we have 15 times three plus 13 times one plus 11 times one. And then to calculate profit, again, we will do revenue minus cost. And that will be $171. So what happened is profit increased from dollar 61 to dollar 171 therefore this is a good idea to implement okay so again what we did is basically we looked at the case with the current setting when we have one employee for each step calculated the profit but an important step in that calculation was to identify the effective capacity per employee in terms of number of cars per hour. And when we add two more employees for the washing step, we updated the effective capacity by considering this new addition, which changed our bottleneck from washing to drying step. And then we calculated the revenue by taking into account the, the new cap capacity. And then we calculated the updated cost and just like any other profit calculation, we did revenue minus cost, which gave us $171. So I hope that this video is going to be helpful for you. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one.